but as I've watched their content on a consistent basis, I've realized these dudes are so deep in the gay communist agenda, they can't even criticize it anymore. All right, so I've been meaning to make a video on Andy Pants Gaming for a while now, and I finally have the opportunity to do that since, well, he made this absolute dumpster fire of a video. And I gotta say, this has to be his worst video yet. Now, if you don't know who Andy Pants Gaming is, well, first of all, lucky you. And second of all, well, basically, they're an anti-woke content creator that sits back talking about how games are very woke now and the gay game developers and the corporations are trying to push communist left-wing propaganda you know spreading communist propaganda by adding a gay character into a game and no that's not a joke he genuinely believes that now i noticed that andy pants looks at a lot of his hate videos a lot of videos criticizing him usually have a comment or two by him and i wanted to go ahead and put this on the table in case he sees this i know you've already ducked debates in the past and i know you're probably going to duck this offer too however i'm still going to put it on the table. My Discord was always linked in my description. I'm not hard to reach out to, and we can set up a debate. But knowing you, you'll probably decline that too, or ignore this entirely. You know, for somebody who supposedly speaks their mind and says what others don't because they're too scared to say it, you seem awfully scared to say what you think in a live discussion. But I digress. Now, before we do get into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 3k subs. Let's try and hit 3k subs before the end of 2024. Let's make it happen. Anyways, without further further ado, let's go ahead and get into this absolute dumpster fire of a video. Brace yourselves because brain cells will be lost. So with every new video I make now, I'm like probably going to get canceled after this one. Oh, well, here we go. So in this video, I want to talk about a disturbing pattern that I've begun to notice in some of our most celebrated YouTubers. I, like many people, was at one time a fan of the act man skill up and Bellular. But as time has gone on, I've noticed a pretty upsetting trend in the content of all three of these guys. Have you noticed these three creators never call anything woke? And if they do, they're making fun of you for using the term? Oh, gee, I really wonder why they make fun of you for using the term woke. It's almost like most people that use the term unironically are nothing but a bunch of sensitive snowflakes who will literally cry over they them pronouns in a game. I swear, if you show an anti-woke loser a pride flag or a trans flag, they will have a meltdown and start screaming groomer. Off cough, Shadow Raven Studios. Shouts to my friend Moment of Sanity. People like woke content detector on Steam who will make lists over 1400 games long calling games woke and not recommending them of course nobody's going to take you anti-woke losers seriously have you noticed they never talk about the obvious uglification of women in games the past few years I'm sorry, but if you're playing a game and your number one priority is how pretty the women are in the game, I think you need to go in your bathroom and take a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, how have I hit such a low spot in my life? Have you noticed they never talk about the LGBTQI tilde sign 7 community? and how they basically run video games right now? Hmm, they don't talk about that. Maybe it's because, you know, there's actual better things to talk about, like, I don't know, maybe the game being broken, or the mechanics not functioning properly, or the game being too repetitive. You know, Andy Pants, I think they're not talking about these things that you're listing out because, uh, they don't fucking matter. Is this guy genuinely that delusional to where he thinks, yeah, if a game failed, it was because the developers were gay, not because the game was bad or anything, no. No, it was actually the developer's sexuality. Like, okay, buddy, can you go touch grass now? Have you noticed they never point out obvious racism against white people? In fact, they'll often say lies like, racism against white people isn't possible. Now look, I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen Actman even mention racism, let alone racism against white people. And if he did say something stupid like, oh, you can't be racist to white people, what I would say is, well, he's an idiot. Racism is racism either way. And I think anybody with more than five brain cells can understand that. Have you noticed none of them ever talk about the trillions of dollars companies make by bumping up their DEI and ESG initiatives and by putting evil woke nonsense in their games? All right, so I had to go ahead and Google what these terms mean because I have never heard these terms before. Now, when you go ahead and look up the term DEI, it stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm not so sure what's so evil about that. I mean, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, that seems pretty fair to me. Another term he mentioned is ESG, which I also don't know what that means, so I decided to look that up. And that stands for environmental, social, and governance. Now, there was a lot of stuff on ESG, and it was all too complicated, so I decided to look it up in simple terms. 
terms. And to put it simply, it says ESG means using environmental, social, and governance factors to assess the sustainability of companies and countries. These three factors are seen as best embodying the three major challenges facing corporations in wider society, now encompassing climate change, human rights, and adherence to laws. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm missing the evil part, I think. I don't know, guys. Maybe I'm like missing the bigger picture here, but I'm not seeing the evil part anywhere. And most importantly, I'm not really seeing how this affects games in any serious way. Oh no, there's a gay character in the game. Oh no, there's a person of color in the game. It's like, why should you care? Why does it matter? Who cares? Have you noticed they never talk about the complete removal of masculinity from video games? Now, I'm not sure if this guy is aware of this little game that came out recently called uh, The First Descendant. You know, the game I'm playing in the background right now. But there are plenty good examples of masculine characters within that game. And keep in mind, that game came out like two months ago. Not sure what Andy Pants is talking about when he says the complete stripping of masculinity from video games. So why? Why are these three dudes intentionally avoiding calling out wokeness in games? To put it simply, it's because these dudes are cucks. They're pussies. All three of these guys are definitely voting for Kamala Harris in November. I heard Endymion call him Ackman one time and the label definitely fits. So those are the surface level reasons. I'll get to the deeper reasons in a minute. I just watched an entire Ackman video about Concord. I know, it was painful. It contained a lot of tired millennial jokes. I'm a millennial, by the way. Takes one to know one. He talked a lot about low player numbers. He talked about how much money it wasted. And then when he gets to the part where you're supposed to talk about why the game failed, he just says, uh, bad gameplay, bad character design. Why do you suppose Ackman doesn't talk about the fact that Concord has three black females in it and not a single white man? Why do you suppose he doesn't talk about all the LGBTQ plus activists on Twitter who worked on the game? Ah, yes, because Concord failed because there was no white men in the game, because there was no big, straight, masculine white men. No, 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 guys. Concord failed because some of the developers were LGBTQ activists. No, guys, the game didn't fail because the game sucked and it was charging you $40 and it sucked compared to free alternatives. No, 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 guys, guys. The game failed because some of the developers had they them pronouns in their bio. Like you do realize how stupid you sound, right? And do you realize how even more stupid you sound when you spew that garbage and then expect other creators to spew that same garbage to regurgitate it, to regurgitate this verbal diarrhea that is flowing out of your mouth right now? Do you genuinely think Concord failed because there was three black women in the game? Do you genuinely think Concord failed because because players were like, oh, oh, let me check their Twitter. Uh, is that a, is that a pride flag I see in their bio? Nope, not playing this game. Can't I can't play it. No, I can't play it. There is a pride flag in one of the developers' profiles on Twitter. That automatically means I cannot play this game. Look, I know that's how anti-woke losers think, but not everybody thinks like that. You know, there's uh, normal people out there that actually use their brain and actually dislike games for actual reasons rather than getting offended over a pride flag or a person of color existing within a game. You know, I don't think anybody wants to pay $40 for a game that's mediocre compared to its free alternatives. That's why Concord failed. Not because the game is, in quotation marks, woke. Hmm, interesting. He even at one point in the video makes fun of the idea that bigger breasts would save this game. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, dude. Is that idea so ridiculous? You'll notice similar things when watching cucks like Skill Up and Bellular analyze Concord. Why do you suppose these guys spend 30 minutes talking about the gameplay and not one minute talking about how a huge reason the game failed is because the characters are fat and ugly. I'm sorry, what do you want these guys to do? Do you want them to spend 30 minutes doing a smasher pass on each character in Concord? So I used to think these three guys were just missing details. I used to give them the benefit of the doubt. But as I've watched their content on a consistent basis, I've realized these dudes are so deep in the gay communist agenda, they can't even criticize it anymore. I'm sorry, when were we talking about communism? Since when was this a part of the discussion? I'm telling you right now, these anti-woke losers have to be schizophrenic, at least on some sort of level. Because what the fuck? Basically, you've got incredibly evil companies like Activision who support and Satanism and push DEI initiatives and also spend billions and billions of dollars a year on marketing. Now, do you think they're going to give a YouTuber like me who calls them out on a consistent basis a sneak peek and a tour of the studio? Of course not. They want a shill. 
They want an empty shill like Skillup who won't bring up the woke stuff. They want somebody who will be an empty mouthpiece and they can just pour talking points into them while they regurgitate them out. Actman is indeed good at playing an act. He's good at appearing natural and looking like he's riffing. The reality is he's reading a careful script that has definitely been run by his handlers at Activision and Bungie and other DEI departments. You know, I think the reason why nobody wants to invite you to special events or give you tours of their facilities is probably because you cannot help but be homophobic each video you make. Gee, I really wonder why these companies want nothing to do with you. Maybe it's because you're saying stuff like broken LGBTQ people in your videos. Again, notice these guys never mention BlackRock, ESG, or any of the gay, communist, globalist cancer that these companies push. I found this article on screen here about Bellular that was definitely interesting. It basically talks about how he's been given insider interviews and gets to see deep behind the scenes information about upcoming World of Warcraft games. But part of his ability to get that info is to continue to be a corporate shill for Activision and parrot the talking points they want. He's a good little sheep and never asks about DEI or ESG. This is why even if they wanted to, Actman, Bellular, and Skillup can't talk about the woke agenda. These low-T beta males have been bought and sold by Activision, by Sony, by Microsoft, by Bungie. Sure, they can have complaints about gameplay and too many microtransactions and stuff like that, but you will never hear these guys complaining about why women are so ugly in video games now because they're good corporate servants. I don't know why, but the way this guy words things, it makes him come off as somebody who doesn't care about good character design in games. It rather makes him look like somebody who lusts over characters in games and then gets really angry and pissy when the characters aren't his type. It's just the way this guy keeps moaning and whining about the in quotation marks uglification of women in video games games and complains that these guys aren't talking about that enough and they should be talking about that instead rather than talking about actual issues in games like too many microtransactions and bad gameplay. But no, no, no. Instead, let's talk about how attractive game characters are. Like, do you not hear yourself? Do you not realize how stupid you sound right now? One mistake I think a lot of people make is thinking that just because these guys will say a game is terrible, they must be objective. Not so. A journalist or content creator is not judged by their ability to say a game is bad. They're judged by their ability to be able to breach any topic. The fact that these creators have never talked about DEI, ESG, and the woke propaganda indicates to me either A, they're censoring their real thoughts, or B, these guys are the propaganda machines themselves. Also, there's no way they're not aware of it. Every third comment on YouTube is calling out woke garbage. So these guys are either willing corporate cucks or unwilling corporate cucks. Either way, they're owned by the corporations. Zooming out a little bit, another interesting issue here is the debate around company structure and the corporate life of video game companies. These three creators always toe the woke slash communist party line rather than identifying the real problem. Now, I know Andy Pants, of all people, is not talking about somebody else not addressing the real problem, in quotation marks. You wouldn't know anything about addressing real issues. You're too concerned about how hot a female character is in a video game rather than the actual gameplay or the actual microtransactions of the game itself. Or, you know, literally any other issue that actually matters. The actual workers at the bottom, they are the problem. Let me give you an example. So I've talked to a lot of people in the AAA game industry confidentially the past few months. I can't reveal their identities. Companies like Ubisoft have a president, a board of directors, and these are the guys who just care about the money, basically. Below this line right here, you have all the creatives. Usually the person in charge of the creative work is the studio head, game director, somebody like that, and it's usually a whole group of people. Then below the studio heads, you have the 500 or 1,000 people who work at the company. When stuff goes bad and you have a game like Concord that fails, homo leftists like Bellular always blame the president. It's the billionaires. It's the billionaires, they screech. But after talking to a ton of people in the AAA industry the past few months, I've come to learn this. Billionaires have no idea what kind of game their game company is making. Billionaires don't really care what kind of game the creatives are making. Billionaires just want money to be made. So gay communists like Ackman, Bellular, and Skillup, whenever they talk about the industry, actually want you to be distracted from the real problem, the studio employees themselves. 
the studio and the people on the bottom are the ones who actually make the game. They are the ones with pronouns in their bio. They're the ones with pride flags in their bio. It's the actual people on the bottom who are making these games trash. All you need to do is get on Twitter to see how true this is. Illustrators, designers, people like Kim Belair. Like I said, they're always gay Satanists and everybody in the creative department at a video co game company has pronouns and gay flags in their bio. Oh no, pronouns, you know, the English language. The English language is now woke. Also, what does this have to do with games being bad? Oh no, the developers have pride flags and pronouns in their bios? Like, I don't really see how that has anything to do with the game itself. Maybe if you actually took a look at a game that did poorly and actually played it, and actually, you know, research and examine things rather than obsessing over what the developers have in their bios on Twitter, then maybe, just maybe, you could put together some halfway decent talking points. But let's be real here, this guy is too offended by pride flags and pronouns to actually give any real criticism on a game. The wild thing that's happening in the video game industry right now is the chickens are coming home to f***ing roost. Billionaire investors for 20 years used to be able to invest money in Ubisoft and get a return on that money. But Ubisoft has been a complete shit show this year, and investors are going to start wondering why their $1 billion didn't turn into $2 billion this year. And this is honestly the sea change that I'm hoping for. This is what we are all praying happens. I want the billionaires to come in and fire all the studio heads and put people in there who can actually make a masculine freaking game for once. Dude, I don't know what it is with this guy and obsessing over in quotation marks masculinity in video games. I'm not sure if he's like insecure about his masculinity in real life, so he has to like live it out in video games. But like who is going to tell this dude that the billionaires don't care whether a game is in quotation marks gay or in quotation marks masculine. They just care if it makes money. And do you know how a game typically makes money and succeeds? It usually makes money and succeeds by just being a good game, by just being enjoyable to play. That's what billionaires are interested in. They don't care about the feminine games, the masculine games, the woke games, the anti-woke games. They are purely there to make money. So stop trying to spin it like the billionaires are on your side, because if they watched one of your videos, they'd probably have an aneurysm. Guys, the funny thing is, the billionaires are on our side. We want games with hot chicks and mainly dudes. Those are the games we are buying. Billionaires actually want us to get what we want. The problem is 90% of the people who work at game studios are gay Satanists. The few based studios out there are giving us exactly what we want right now. Asian studios, Czech Republic studios, Eastern European studios. Every other studio out there in the West is chugging the woke homo mind virus and is done basically. They might as well close up shop. All right, so in closing, look, honestly, Actman and Skill Up can have whatever political opinion they want. They can be cucks and vote for Kamala this year. I don't care. My whole reason for making this video is to make you aware of the people whose videos you are watching. Anytime you watch an Actman video or a Skill Up video or a Bellular video, just know you are funding the current establishment of video games. You are funding the LGBTQ games. You are funding woke games every time you watch Actman, Bellular, and Skill Up. Conversely, every time you watch Endymion, Jay the Concept, Synthetic Man, Short Fat Otaku, or Andy Pants, we are going against the woke agenda and the woke mind virus. Well, the video just about ends there. The last minute or so is spent talking about these two games that make fun of, in quotation marks, wokeness. And I don't think anybody cares to hear about that, so we're just going to go ahead and round off the video there. Now, as for my final thoughts, I have to say this has to be one of the most brain-dead videos I've seen in a while. And it's kind of disturbing seeing how many people unironically agree with this guy. Anyways, that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. If you did enjoy, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 3k subs and make sure to check out the discord server link in description anyways with all that being said i'll catch you guys in the next video peace